Well, good morning. We welcome everybody today as we come to this memorial service for Brother Neil Cruz. And we thank the Lord for a life that is well lived and that God used him in a lot of ways over these past 90 years. And we thank the Lord for his salvation in Jesus Christ. And we pray, God, as we come today that his witness will live on in the hearts and lives of every person here who's come together in the name of Jesus Christ. We remember Brother Neal as he comes because born right here in Brantley County, age 90 years, one month, and 28 days. And uh, he was a faithful member of Hoboken Baptist Church, served as an usher, as a deacon, and he was always faithful. As long as he was able, he was there. You could count on him being there. And even after he got disabled to a degree, he would still come and be a part of the services that were there. And I enjoyed Brother Neil and thank the Lord for his testimony. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. But right now, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you that you are the Lord who has provided some better thing for those who love you. And today we believe because of the testimony of his life that Brother Neil is in your presence in the house of the Lord. And God, we know that as he entered those gates that you whispered to him and said, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. So bless all who are here today. Comfort hearts that are touched and broken. And Lord, uh, mend hearts that are broken in your presence because you said the weeping endureth for the night. Joy will come in the morning. And we know that one day it's going to be a joyful day as we gather around the throne of God. And we rejoice because you've given life everlasting and full of glory. And we thank you, Lord, for what you have done and what you continue to do. In Jesus' name, amen. As I said, I always enjoyed Brother Neil. And uh, even before the pandemic hit and that kind of thing, go by the house to see him. I get so tickled sometimes because him and Miss Vivian would be in an argument. And, I mean, they'd be going to it pretty strong. I'd knock on the door and fram on the door and beat on the door. Finally, somebody would hear, uh, <laughs> hear a knock and come to the door because neither one of them could hear very well. And I'd go in, and uh, he <laughs> I remember one time Brother Neil said, Well, preacher, it's good to see you. said, uh, Me and Vivian's having a little dispute. But I said, It don't matter. I can't hear a word she's saying. <laughs> So he, he faced life in that manner. And I can't tell you how many times that, that I would see him because he had learned to sign and he knew sign. He'd, he'd say, do you know what that means? Or do you know what that means? Or, or he'd give me some sign and I'd always say, well, no, I don't know what that means. He'd explain it to me. He was proud of the fact that he was able to communicate in the deaf language. And, but you know what? I said a moment ago in my prayer that when he got to heaven, the Lord leaned over and whispered and said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You know why I said that? Because he don't have a hearing problem today. He can hear the slightest whisper, and he can know the power of God because he made arrangements a long time ago to ask Jesus Christ to come into his heart to save his soul. He followed the Lord in believer's baptism, and he joined the church, and he served the Lord as faithfully as possible. And I urge you today that if you have never done that, today would be a good day. For you to do the same thing, to receive Christ as your Savior and look upon him as the Lord of your life. There are a couple of passages of scripture I want to share with you out of the word of God this morning. Number one is found in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 12. It says this, it says the sleep of a laboring man is sweet. And I think about that laboring man. And that's uh, what I think about uh, Brother Neil. I think about uh, in all the discussion, you know, when he was coming up, he talked about how hard they had to work and how they had to labor from early morning to late at night. Sometimes things would happen and they'd have to labor most of the night to be able to, to make it through. So he knew what labor was. He knew that that labor was expected of him. In fact, he believed what the Bible said. If a man won't work, don't let him eat. He believed that a laborer was worthy of his hire. And he believed that labor was part 
of the natural course of life because in the book of Genesis, God told Adam when he had sinned, he said, now you're going to earn your living by the sweat of the brow and you're going to have to labor, you're going to have to work. And so if a man will fulfill the role of God, he's going to have to work. If he's able to work, he's got to work. And I know that ethic stayed with him all of his life because Brother Neil was always wanting to do something. If he couldn't do anything else, he'd get up and walk up and down the driveway or he'd walk down Tebow Street on the sidewalk. He wanted to be doing something because of the labor of his life. And so the Bible says that the rest of a laboring man is sweet. Let me tell you, his rest is sweet today because it's in the presence of the Heavenly Father. And I believe with all my heart that God welcomed him with rejoicing when he came to be home with him. And he knew the power and the promise of God to rest in the arms of Jesus. What a glorious truth that is. So I ask you again, if that day came for you today, would you be resting in the arms of Jesus Christ? Would you know the Lord in such a way that it's just one step from here into the presence of God because your heart is ready and right to be with the Lord. The other passage I wanted to read was in Psalm 16, verses 15 and 16. The Bible says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant, and the son of thine handmaid thou hast loosed my bonds. How can that be precious in the sight of the Lord when one of his saints dies? Jesus even said in John 14, Let not your heart be troubled. Precious in the sight of the Lord are the death of his saints. Why? Number one is because God loves his children. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He loves his children. And today, if you're a child of God, I want you to know God loves you. No matter what goes on in this world, no matter what happens, the Lord loves you with a love that is pure and holy. In fact, 1 John says that God is love. And because he is love, he loves you. But there's a second reason that his saints who die are precious in his sight. And that is because the Lord longs for his children to be with him. I think everybody that has a good family and a wonderful family, they long for their children to be with them. They want to be seated around the table. They want to have fellowship with them. They want to enjoy the blessings of what their children happen to be. And I believe that with Brother Neil with all my heart because he was a child of God. Today he is in the fellowship of the Father. And old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. The Bible says he's in that place where there is no sickness, no sorrow, no death, no pain, for the former things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new, and they are new with him today. As I said, he don't have any trouble hearing, he don't have any trouble walking, he don't have any trouble breathing, he don't have any trouble with anything because God has made all things new. Precious in the sight of the Lord are the death of his saints. And finally, in the book of Revelation, the Bible said, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. He is resting now from the labors of life, from the toilsome days of the farm and the hard days that he put in in this world, working and sweating and toiling and trying to survive. And Brother Neil had more to climb over than most of us right here today. But he was willing to make the effort not to sit down and to pity himself, but to rise above that pity and to know that he could do all things through Christ which strengthened him. He didn't sit down and ask for somebody to simply wait on him as he came along in life. He didn't expect a handout. He didn't expect this or that or the other. He believed that God had given him the ability to do what he needed to do. And, brother, he did it. He went after it. He worked hard at it. He slaved many times to make sure that there was bread on his table and clothes on his back. He did not, he did not lay down in the provincial uh, pool of this world and say, well, somebody feed me, somebody clothe me, somebody take care of me. No, he rose up in strength and in power and in wisdom to do so. And along the way, as I said, he served the Lord, whatever needed to be done. He was an usher in the church. 
He saw that people got where they need to be, and he helped take the offering and that sort of thing. He was also a deacon who served faithfully. The Bible reminds us that a deacon, uh, as he serves, is a man who does the work, really, of the pastor because he is the same as a pastor in equal proportion in ministering to people and seeing about people and caring about people and praying for people. And I know that Neil did that because he had a prayer list in his mind, if not written down. And there were several people that any time I ever visited with him, he said, you need to pray for old so-and-so, old so-and-so. <laughs> you need to pray for old so-and-so. And Neil was on up in years then. And, uh, but he never looked at himself as being ancient or old. He looked at himself as the ability to do what he could do in the power and the purpose and the plan of God. So God said, right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Blessed. That word blessed is a wonderful word. It means happy, happy. I can tell you today, Neil Cruz is happy in the Lord. He's rejoicing in the presence of the Lord. None of this stuff of the world that afflicts us and affects us is bothering him at all because he has a new body, he has a new mind, he has a new soul. Everything has been made new in the presence of God. He doesn't worry about those things anymore. He knows and understands fully everything there is about God. A lot of things he might not have understood before, a lot of things he might have struggled with and trying to have knowledge about. But let me tell you, he struggles with nothing today because he has been placed in the very arms of Jesus Christ himself. What a glorious testimony of a man who lived his life well Maybe what some would call a handicap. But you know what? Neil called it an opportunity. Some would say, well, he didn't have what others had. He had what God had. That made all the difference in his life. And I'm telling you today, he was a man who did not put forth excuses and say, I can't because he said, I'll try because I want to. And because I'm willing to do what I can do to the glory of the Heavenly Father. What a joy to know a man like this. And what a blessing by the testimony of all you who have gathered here today. Somehow, some way, some place, in some manner, Neil Cruz touched your life. He touched you. Maybe nobody else knew the particular touch that he had upon your life. But somewhere along the way, you met him, you encountered him, you knew him. And there's something that in his life that communed with your life, and all of a sudden there is a fullness of that relationship and that's why you're here today because you remember and God reminds us one of the greatest things you can do as a child of God is to remember the things of the Lord well when I got here brother Rodney was telling me said well we don't have any music just uh, just do I said well I'm probably gonna sing because there's a song that Brother Neil loved with all his heart. And you probably know the song, and you could probably sing right along with me. When I got to look at that song, there were eight verses of that song. Don't get worried, I ain't going to sing all of them. But I can tell you they speak of the truth of exactly what our relationship is all about. What a beautiful thought I am thinking concerning the great speck over remember her name is recorded on the pages of god's holy word she is spreading her wings for a journey she's going to leave by and by when the trumpet shall sound in the morning, she'll rise and go up in the sky. When he cometh descending from heaven on the cloud that he writes in his word, I'll be joyfully carried to meet him on the wings of that great speckled bird and he was carried to meet the Lord and you know what that song refers to the fact as 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 says that one day the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel 
and the trump of God shall sound, and those who have died as Christians shall rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And he closes that passage with these words, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Our great comfort is this is not all. The cemetery is not the final place. It's just the resting place for the body. Because the Bible said that God is going to raise up every, every body of every Christian and he's going to fashion them like unto his glorious body. According to Philippians 3, he reminds us that this old body will be changed. So as we come today to commit the body of our beloved brother Neil Cruz to the grave, we do so with the anticipated hope that one day the Lord will come again and he's going to raise this body up. It's going to be changed. It's amazing. I don't know how God's going to do that, but he's God. That's his business. Amen. And I think about that. You know, just like we remember the twin towers that came down in New York and, and the horrendous fuel that burned people to ashes and their ashes blew to the wind in a thousand different directions. But the Bible says that one day God is going to gather every one of those and he's going to regenerate them into a living body and they're going to stand in his presence forever. It's like the story of Ezekiel and the dry bones. And those bones that were in the dust will put on flesh and blood and they will stand whole before Almighty God. So it is with Brother Neil. When the Lord comes back, he's going to raise him up and his body's going to be changed. But hey, he's not here. He's already in the presence of the Lord. And the glorious news that he's going to unite that spirit and that body to be changed into a resurrected, glorified body and he's going to live with the Lord forever. So home is the workman. Home from the toil. Home from the battle. Home from it all. Now he rests in the glorious presence of Jesus. Able to see. Able to hear. But among him you will not find one single tear. For he's rejoicing in the presence of God. Remembering the blessings that he has. And God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we ask now that by your grace, you will comfort the hearts of those that need that comfort today. Help us to know that though weeping endures for the night, joy will come in the morning. Help us to know that it is your job to bind up the brokenhearted and to heal the wounded. And Lord, we thank you today that not one tear falls, but that you know about it. Not one burden encompasses our life but what you're able to lift and to set us free from it. And Lord, when we pass from this life, just as one day we shall, as Brother Neil has done, it will seem but just a whisper of the wind going by, and we'll spend an eternity in the gladness of God. So Lord, comfort. Hold, strengthen, bless each and every one here. And if there's one person here who has never received Jesus Christ as your Savior, what a testimony for the Lord and for Brother Neil that you might get that settled today. How do you do that? You accept the fact that you need Jesus. You accept the fact that you're a sinner and you're separated from God. You accept the fact that Jesus loved you enough to die on the cross and shed his blood that you may be saved from your sin. You believe that and you receive him by saying simply, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's all it really takes if you're willing to receive Christ today. I pray if right now you would pray that prayer and ask Jesus to come into your heart. You'll let me or someone know before you leave these grounds today. And what a glorious testimony of the homegoing of a man who loved the Lord. God just bless us. Be with us now. Thank you for the love of God that gives us a hope beyond this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.